Welcome back to Jeff Randall Live. Now, BT struck a deal today to expand its sporting coverage and step up competition with B Sky B, the owner of Sky News. The Telecoms Group has agreed to buy ESPN's UK, Ireland and US channels. BT plans to complete the deal by the end of July with its new sports package expected to be launched later in the summer. The deal includes broadcasting rights to the FA Cup, the Scottish Premier League, the UEFA Europa League and the German Bundesliga. The SBN deal also gives BT the right to broadcast live sports from the United States, currently aired on ESPN America, including American football, college basketball and NASCAR motor racing. Well, joining me here in the desk is the leading telecoms and media analyst, Claire Enders. Claire, lovely to see you. Thank you for coming in. How important is this for BT? Is it a sort of marginal accretion or a quantum leap? Well, it's a quantum leap in the sense that they've displaced the second player offering pay TV football, which was ESPN. And ESPN was in that position for five years, and it too had supplanted Satanta. So it has stepped into the number two player's shoes. Now, BT shares were down by nearly 2% today. Is that on fears that the company has overpaid? Because I couldn't find the price anywhere in the announcement. Well, we can extrapolate from what we already know about the rights payments and so on, and it's clear that BT is, is handsomely exceeding its initial guidance of an impact of the investment in pay TV football of around 10% of their free cash flow, 250 million. Clearly, this move and many others that BT has made has upped the ante, and we would be expecting that we would be looking at a range of around 500 million a year of exposure, which is twice the guidance originally given. So 500 million a year for three years starts to look like one and a half billion pounds, which is a very, very serious uh, and significant investment in, in, in premium football. And, and it has to really work for BT. I mean, it is upping the ante for itself primarily. Because you have to remember that ESPN, no more than Satanta, they don't compete with B Sky B, Sky Sports 1, 2, and 3, because mm -hmm. those are channels that are taken by the core group of fans. And, and they give the biggest range and, and also the range of, of, of games as well as days and so on. So what BT has done is actually established a good number two position in the market, which position had, alas, not been sufficient for either Satanta or ESPN to ever break even. So, you know, it's made a difficult situation slightly less precarious because ESPN is no longer in the, in the position of potentially competing for those rights at the next auction in May 2015. And what about B-Sky B? It's still the market leader in terms of sports broadcasting. Does it now have a potentially dangerous challenger? No, it actually doesn't, any more than ESPN was a dangerous challenger. I mean, we await to hear from BT what the situation is going to be in terms of packages and so on. But inherently, what you have is a market where Sky Sports 1, 2, and 3 are extraordinarily well established and where the people who subscribe to ESPN are really the diehard fans mm -hmm. who want the absolutely full panoply of games available. And since there are so many, and also remember those games are also transmitted in pubs and mm -hmm. clubs if they're very significant. And so really inherently, you, you have a small number two position possible. But given that Sky successfully bid for uh, five packages going forward, essentially, you know, most of the games that are worth watching are always going to be on Sky Sports 1, 2, and 3. And, and, and that is a given. What BT has done is to actually set out for itself at least a sustainable position in the market in, in what is essentially a split right market. And, and, and all it's going to do is actually be able to survive longer. And very, very briefly, for consumers? A better deal all around? Absolutely, a very good deal because now they're not going to have to subscribe to three channels. They'll be able to stick to the existing two for those diehard fans. Perfect. Claire Enders, lovely to see you. Thank you for coming in. Well, that's almost all we've time for this evening. But before I go, here's my number of the day. It's £123 million. Pounds. Talking of football, that's the total cash reserves at Arsenal Football Club, up from £115 million pounds six months ago, with the team in danger of missing Champions League qualification. How long before the directors open the chequebook? You've been watching Jeff Randall live. If you've missed any of this evening's interviews, they are all on the Sky News for iPad app. Tomorrow, I'll be talking to David Ritchie. He's chief executive of House Builder. Bovis Holmes. Next up, all the top stories here on Sky.